Welcome back to Essentials Explained. Today is our second video discussing number formats, and we will talk tactically about how to utilize this powerful tool to manipulate your numbers to present them in the way you want. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump in. So important, control one is how I pull up this format cells. What you can also do is there are basic number formats in the toolbar. So if you want to do dollar, if you want to do percentage, if you want to do you know, accounting, change the decimal point, you can do that up here. And that's probably good for, you know, maybe 80%, 90% of what you want to do. Control one will just give you additional flexibility. So if I go back and I just change this to general, this is the number format Excel is going to use when you put in any random number, right? Like if I put in hundred, you can see it. I get a home. This will show your current number format. So this is general, right? I can put in 90 down here and it'll be general. I can also go control one and it'll show you the category you're in. General is pretty simple. I think it's actually the same thing as just the number. Maybe it has, I think it has one of these conditional references where we'll show it in a scientific notation if it's above maybe one E to the 12th, right? So if I go here and if I change this to number, I get essentially the same thing. This has decimal places, but if I put this down, this is the same thing as my general. I just don't have this format in here. So let's go through this, right? We have these basic pre-built number formats. We have number, you can toggle the decimal places and the thousand separator. I was like the thousand separator. I find pretty much everyone does currency, right? You can do decimal places. You could make this any kind of other currency you wanted. You can also do accounting format, dates, times, percentages. These are nice. And so, right, one will become a hundred percent. Excel will scale that appropriately. Fractions. I've never used these. Don't really know anyone that has scientific. I don't use these either text special. Custom. Let's talk custom because this is where probably a lot of people don't know how to use this and will really benefit you if you learn it well. So the first thing to understand when thinking about number formats is how Excel denotes certain number types. So if you look at some of these templates, you'll see Excel has a semicolon in here. What that's saying is the first part of my schema, I want to denote positive values and the second part of my schema I want to denote negative values. So if I hit OK, you can see how Excel made negative values red. It put the parentheses around there. That's because after the semicolon, it has bracket red and then it has the number in parentheses. If I were to use another semicolon, the third section denotes blank. So if I put blank and then the fourth section denotes text. So if I put semicolon, text. I hit enter. You can see how my zero values have been changed to a blank string and then my text has been changed to text. None of these numbers have actually changed, right? If I look at my formula bar, it's still zero. If I click F2, I can still see it's zero. But that is really important to understand. These four different sections will be really critical. And if I go in here, let's say I want to make this super obvious. I can just change this first section to positive. I can change this second section to negative if I hit enter. And now all my number formats are updated to reflect the schema I input in my number format tab. None of these numbers have changed 10, 10,000. I can still grab these if I paste them as value. It'll still be the number. I can still reference these with formulas. Um, let's just copy that format in and these are still numbers, but being shown in a different way because you specified a custom number format. What you're probably asking yourself is, why would I just wanna ever show this string instead of showing any kind of my value? Good question, you probably wouldn't. And so the reason Excel isn't showing any of your numbers is because you haven't told it how you want your number to work with this character string. So if I put a hashtag, comma, hashtag, hit enter. Now Excel knows I want to put my value variable ahead of this positive text string and use a comma. If I were to instead maybe grab this and put it behind my text string, 
and delete that first section, hit enter. Now Excel has flipped them and it says, I want to say positive and then follow that with my value number. These can work a million different ways. So if I wanted to put 0.00, .00 now I have decimal points. So number of different ways to work with these and we'll walk through a number of examples of how to specifically toggle these, but understanding the structure of how Excel wants you to put this in is very important. We go down to our blanks, right? I just put blank here. Maybe you don't want to show blank. You don't think a all capital blank is super aesthetically pleasing. You can delete this, hit enter and Excel will show you nothing. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Another way you could do it is you know, put in just like a dash probably looks good or you actually don't even need these parentheses. So if I deleted this and just left this space empty and hit enter, Excel wouldn't show me anything. That's a cool way to do it. Working with text. So if I put a value variable in here, it's not going to work because this isn't a number. If I look in what this string is, right? So if I just change this back to general, it says this is text. There's no numeric value in there. So if I wanted to have that format show, and maybe I'll just reference my old number format so I don't need to change it and say at, Excel will concatenate the number format I've picked. So if instead of showing text, I want to say equals, you know, if I wanted to say followed by text, it will just add followed by text to my text string. I probably wouldn't use this to concatenate too much because I think it's honestly confusing. And I don't think a lot of people actually really know that this is what you would be doing. And the key value of updating suffixes and prefixes with numbers is that you retain the actual value. When you already have a text string, there's really no value in adding it as a number format because you can accomplish the same thing with the concatenation formula and is much clearer to everyone who's working with your file, right? This is super obvious to me that I know, right? If I just change this back to general, now I can really easily follow this formula. If we had it like this, you probably have someone that doesn't know how to update this and will come in and be like, this is text, you know, followed by, let's say followed by Charles and they wouldn't really understand why this <laughs> followed by text keeps popping up and they might not really get that you need to go in here and maybe update this. So wouldn't use this for concatenation, but helpful to know it is an option and helpful to understand the schema of different number formats. Let's change these all back to general. A few different ways to do that. I could go one, I could just click general up here. That works. I could go one, I could go back to custom. I could click general in my custom section. That works. I could go up here to the toolbar and I could click general, or I could also use shortcuts. Alt H N general, right? Excel, many, many different ways to accomplish the same task. Let's say I want to auto format. I'll clear out this followed by Charles and then clear out the rest of this section. Well, so general is what we just talked about. This is Excel's core number format zero. This is the same thing, right? We just, I guess, lost that special denotation for large numbers 0, 0.00. So all we've done here is add two decimal places, right? So if I go back and let's say I only wanted one decimal place, I can just remove this last zero and Excel only shows me one decimal place. Let's say I had a super long number and I wanted to show you know, five decimal places. I can do that very, very easy with the custom number format. And you see how I updated these and Excel saved them at the bottom. Excel will figure out, hey, if you use these, maybe you want to save it. Maybe you want to reuse it. So if you have a number format you really like, you can save them at the bottom down here. So maybe I'll go down to this next one. So this is this hashtag, or some people will call it a pound sign. I call it a hashtag, but call it whatever you want. What's the difference between these and the zeros? So these are flexible, right? Where zeros will force you to have a value. So if I hit okay, you can see like with this one and this 10, there are value signs here that go away because there's no actual value in there. If I were to go back and maybe change this custom to zero comma zero zero, it's going to force me to have a zero there. 
where with the hashtag or pound sign, you don't have that, right? Even in my zeros, it shows me three zeros. And if I wanted to prove this, I could use control one. Maybe I want to add, you know, zero comma zero zero zero. And so I show even more of those. Helpful to understand. I'd probably mostly use these hashtags. Again, here's a different example. So this is a hashtag with a comma, and then you just added two decimal places. The zeros are more helpful for using at the end of your numbers, right? So if I deleted this and hit OK, now it's only showing me one decimal place. Or if I go back and maybe I replace these with pound sign, pound sign, or, or hashtag, hashtag, you see what doesn't show me anything? That's because these, these value variables will only show you something if you have a value there. So if I change this to maybe 1.5, it shows it. But 1.0 will just fade that out because the hashtag or pound sign won't show anything if it is a zero variable or if it's a, a zero value, excuse me. So if I go back and again, maybe I just want to do you know dot hashtag hashtag, I get this kind of weird output where I don't have a number here because the value variables disappeared. If I change this to, you know, maybe 0 0.5, now I get 0 0.5 without the zero, which also doesn't look very good. So I would generally use kind of this format where you want this zero in front of the decimal place if you're going to show it and you want these showed even if they are zero. So next thing, and then this underscore close parentheses indicates a space. So if I remove this, you see all my positive values and, and even my zeros shift to the far right hand side of the cell where this negative value still sits there. The reason Excel does this is so that all your numbers sit in a row, right? If I zoom in on this, you can see there's like a real small separation between the first value here and the second value here. Not a huge issue, but if you're you know, kind of a stickler and want to make sure all your numbers are aligned correctly, you can use these values because since the positive values don't have a closing parentheses, they need a space there so that this zero is aligned with this zero and this zero. Again, probably not something you need to be super concerned about, but just in case you're curious, Next one is red. So I've used this. I like this. I think it's helpful to easily see what's negative and easily see what is positive. Fun little bonus tip for you guys here. You can actually change this to different colors. So if I wanted to make this, you know, blue, I could make that blue <laughs> or, you know, I could make it um, green. I've never used this. I don't know anyone that's actually <laughs> used this, but I think it's kind of a fun little thing you can do. I'd probably actually do that with conditional formatting instead of utilizing a number format, but fun thing in case you were curious. So let's talk about the really cool stuff you can do here. So changing order of magnitude or changing thousands to millions to billions, etc. So we talked about this in the beginning of the video. If I use a value variable comma, now everything is divided by thousands. Again, this is important to make sure is consistent across all your sections, right? So if I were to use a semicolon and then just put a value variable there, now I have my positive values defined in thousands and my negative values are not and actually don't even show that they're negatives. So be careful when you're using these because you can have this show the wrong number, right? So if I paste this over here, um, oops, that brought the formula with it. But if I pasted just the value, now I have negative 10, where if I paste the value, right, I still have 10 in here, but it's not showing up. And so be really, really careful when you're using these that everything on your sheet is consistent. That's really showing what you want it to show because it's pretty easy to mess stuff up. And even if I put, you know, maybe parentheses around these so I can see they're negative, the numbers are not the same between the positive and negative section. This is negative 10, where this is, 10,000, but they look like the same number. So be really, really careful. Again, I can select this. Let's say we want to put a decimal place. So 0 0.0, we'll put a decimal point. That obviously looks funky. So what we'd probably want to do is put a zero there. And so then that will show it with a decimal point. Again, we'd want to do this 
with our negative values as well. So 0, 0.0 comma. And now we can see this is, this is looking a little bit better. Maybe I want to call out that this is in thousands. So quotation mark thousands. I can just copy that and paste it here. You have that option. You can also, you know, flex. Maybe you want this thousands behind your parentheses because you like that. You can do that. That's really simple. You can add things at the beginning. So let's say you wanted to add a dollar sign. You actually don't need dollar signs in quotation marks. You can just drop those in. Again, flexible on where you place it in your number, right? I could put it here. I can maybe delete that. Maybe I delete the dollar signs. Maybe I want to, you know, say, hey, I don't really trust these numbers. They're kind of made up. I can just put that tilde in these quotation marks and I put that anywhere I want, right? So I have a tilde. I could do that, you know, in front. I could do that behind. If I want to use date values, so if you want to use years, you can just put years here. And so then that will show that number and still keep your original number format, right? So if you want to do this times 365 and then this value you want to make. Oops, I'll just copy that format and I want to make this instead of years. I want to call this days. I could do that. And so these numbers will stay the same. The only thing that will change is how they're being shown. So let me remove this stuff. What else is cool here? Um, maybe you want to show different gears in certain ways. So let's say you build a pretty basic top and you want to you know, have a couple actual years and then a couple forecasted years. So I can go up here, I can go control one and I'll actually just do zero quotation A to note this is an actual, copy this forward. And then if I go control one, I can just change this to maybe, you know, an F or forecast, or, you know, I guess some people would call this P for projected, but that is not super important what you use. Helpful to understand how you would update those and, and what you might change to make it look that way while still having the flexibility to reference your number, right? So if I go back to this situation, and if I wanted to change this, you know, maybe I want to call this actual, if I do that, my formula breaks, right? And it, it doesn't really work well because this can't do the sum if correctly. If instead, maybe I want to make these, I can go down custom zero actual. This formula still works because this number is still 2020, right? You can click into the cell F2 will let you do that and show you the number where it's just showing something different, right? I could take this, maybe I want to call this projected. I can copy paste format, control one, and I could select one of these or I could update it myself. If you're interested in understanding how to build a simple status tracker in Excel, please check out the next video in our series linked here. Otherwise, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you again soon at Essentials Explained.